Well, we've been in a series called Always Winning. We've been in that for a while. I believe this is part seven. We're going to look, uh, going to continue on that uh, tonight. 2 Corinthians 2.14. We're going to look at that. 2 Corinthians 2.14. These two scriptures, uh, you know, very parallel, go hand in hand. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be to God who always causes us uh, or leads us in triumph. The New King James says always causes us, in tri- causes us to triumph, but uh, the King James says that. This says, who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Now thanks be to God who always, everybody say always. Always, always leads us in triumph. What does always mean? It means always. It means always. It means every time. It means there's never a time that he's not leading us in triumph. That means if you're, if you're following him, you're on the way to victory. Now, if we don't follow him, then you, know, you don't know where you're going to end up. But he is always leading us in triumph, always leading us on the path to triumph or victory, or you could say he's always leads us to win. Winning is not people's idea. Winning is not, you know, self-help people's ideas. Winning is not sports teams' ideas. Winning is not a 20th century concept. God wins every time. He doesn't ever lose. His record is, we don't even know on the winning half and zero. He's never lost, ever. Never. And so if we're following him, we don't have to lose. And this is not a superficial self-help, like, okay, rah, rah, we know that's just, you know, not true in real life. No, he said he, are we, we're reading the Bible. It says he always leads us in triumph. That means if we follow him, then we're on the pathway to winning and that we can always win. It may look like we're losing, you know? Like we said, can, it can feel like you're getting your brains beat out. But if you go by the Bible, you say, I'm winning. <laughs> you sit, look it up. I'm winning. I'm winning. Well, you're doing that by faith. You're doing what God said. You know, even people in the natural know this. If you're going to have an attitude of winning, if, if it gets tough, you don't say, oh, no, we're never going to win now. There's no way. You, you're saying, oh, we can still come back, whatever, right? You, they may not come back. But that attitude is, is there. God never loses. And then if we follow him, we'll never lose. So no matter what's going on, we need to say, no, 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 I'm winning. This will turn around. This will turn around because he's leading me in the right way, and I trust him, and what I can't do, he can do. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, another parallel verse. These, these are very similar. It says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, in other words, not through you. People are limited. I don't care how big, strong, fast, smart, connected they are, they're limited. And there's stuff you bump up against in life, I don't care who you are, that you're, it's too big for you. It doesn't matter who, who you are. It doesn't matter how famous you are. Uh, there's things that are humanly impossible. There's situations that a person cannot undo. But with God, all things are possible. He can lead us in victory through him. He can do what we can't do. So we need to humble ourselves and come before him and say, Lord, uh, you know, I may not be able to deal, but you can deal. Always. And then, you know, you're not limited by, by, you should take your eyes off of what you can do anyway. Because that just leads to pride. If, we're gonna, if you're going to compare yourself to others or look at yourself, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to elevate. You're going to think, well, I'm better than them. You know, well, at least I'm not there. Or you're going to be like, well, there's no way I could be there, man. They're so far out ahead of me. Either one's bad. Either one's pride. Mm-hmm. You know, people have a misconception of pride. They, they think it's only one better. No, pride is, oh, no, I'm worse. I can't do anything. Because if God told you you can and you say I can't, one of you two is wrong and it's not God. So what is the proper, proper attitude? Lord, man, if it weren't by the grace of God, I don't know where I'd be, but with you, I just trust you. I humble myself before you. And Lord, I may, I may not, you know, I'm not perfect, 
but you are God, and I just put myself in your hands. Oh, now you're, now you're giving him the ability to work. But somebody that says, well, I can, I can take it. I got it all together. The Bible says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 1, verse 8 tonight. Get into, you know, just kind of recapping there some of the things that we've talked about. Second Corinthians 8, or 1, verse 8, it says, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. Now, this is the Apostle Paul, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, or the letters of the New Testament in the Bible. He said, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble, which came to us in Asia. Notice that right there. We don't want you to be ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia. <laughs> Just because you're a Christian just because you believe the Bible does not mean you won't have any trouble. It's what you do in the middle of trouble. The Bible doesn't teach us that we'll never have any trouble. Now, it's not from God. God's not some co cosmic po puppet master that's like, ooh, let's see if they can do this. No, we live in a fallen world. There is a devil. There is one called Satan. you got a lot of people that don't serve God. You have a fallen earth. You just look around. You know God's not doing all this craziness. It's not God. God will lead us in the right way, but there is trouble. So we come up against trouble. Trouble comes against us. It's what do we do? We need to know what the Word says. So here, Paul is saying, I don't want you to be ignorant. In other words, I want you to know about the trouble that I've had. He said that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but God who raises the death, or raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. So he said, We don't want you to be ignorant of our trouble which we had. And he said that we were burdened, verse 8, that we were burdened beyond measure. We're going to read this in a couple other versions that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. If you go down to the NIV, verse 8 says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Notice that we were under great pressure. Anybody relate? You don't have to raise your hand. Far beyond our ability to endure. So that we despaired of life itself. In the NLT, it says, We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. Now, this is Paul talking about the trouble that they, they had. Paul is the same one that wrote those two first two verses that we read. Always leads us in triumph. God gives us the victory. Now, now he's saying there was trouble against us. So see, he's not talking about you don't have any trouble. He's saying you have victory through the trouble, over the trouble. That's what he's telling us right here. But he's saying how bad it was. See, he's not saying, oh, you know, just don't, don't ever have any problems, you know. It's just all wonderful. And oh, yeah, you win over what? There's nothing to, no, there's no challenges. He's saying, you win all the time. Let me tell you about some of the stuff that I've gone through. We've, we've spent some other time just looking at other places. He's saying, it was so bad, we didn't know if we had the ability to make it. It, it, it was, we were under great pressure. Here it says, we think you ought to know, brother, we, we think you ought to know, brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. Again, don't raise your hand. Ever had something you're like, I don't I just don't know. I don't know if I can get to the other side. You know, it could be it can take all kinds of forms where you feel like. You know, it, there's different things that we, we have uh, challenges in, but you can just say, like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this. I, I don't want to do that job. I don't want to, and you know, may think, you know, to some people it would be like, well, what's the big deal? And you're like, I, don't, I just don't want to do it. It could be a physical challenge. It could be a relational challenge. Paul is talking about, notice what he says again, we were crushed 
This, this is, uh, you know, different language. The other, the other uh, version, we'll go back to it, but we're not going to, not yet. But, you know, it was saying we are burned above measure, above strength. Here he's saying we are crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. We thought we would never live through it. He said in the, you know, in the New King James, we, we despaired even of life. We just didn't know. We didn't know. So this is, this is not a light thing he's talking about. So if you go back up to the New King James Version, <clears throat> read the second part of verse 8, that we were burdened above measure or beyond measure above strength so that we despaired even of life. Yes, that we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. He said it was so bad we didn't know if we could go forward, but we're not going to trust in ourselves, we're going to trust in Him. You know, we're talking about always winning. We're talking about winning no matter what. Winning in life, coming over the obstacles, always triumphing. Well, here's, this is giving a picture of something that looks like it's going to take you out. And if we're going to win, we, we have to look at those type of things and say, no. No, God is able to bring me through anyway. We can be tempted in the face of that, like, they, like it said, we're despaired even of life, but we have to do something. There's a temptation there to quit. We're going to read more about that in a second. There's a temptation there to not trust God. There's a temptation there to be like, man, it's over. And if we're going to get to their side, what do we, that temptation can't overtake us, even when it's crushing even when it's pressure, even when it looks like there's no way, even when it feels like, I don't, wanna, I don't know if I'll make it through, we have to do something what, what, with that. Otherwise, that's where it stops. If we yield to the wrong thing, if we yield to the temptation, then we, we, we won't be going through. That We're going to be defeated. Verse 10, or let's read the end of verse 9, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who does the impossible, Amen. God can do what men cannot do. God can literally raise a person from the dead. He can raise a relationship from the dead. He can raise, he, he can do what people cannot do. Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. Notice Notice what he's saying in verse 10. He, he delivered us from so great a death, and he does, and he will. So they see that's faith. It's looking at it and saying, oh, no, he'll, he'll, we'll go through this. See, he's saying we're going over. It, he has done it, he is doing it, and he will do it. That means no matter what it is, we're going over, but we're looking and we're trusting him. We're trusting him. We're trusting him. We have to take our eyes off of us. And we have to take our eyes off our circumstance. We have to take our eyes off of what we see. If we're going to win, when, when stuff is crushing, when it's pushing, we're going to have to look at something further than what we have. Because if we looked at just what is in front of us, it might be too much. To, we, and anybody, anybody, if we look at the wrong thing, we will be depressed. Did you hear me? Don't fool yourself, because in, in this, I'm just going to say some stuff that's politically incorrect. It doesn't really matter, because we're talking about the Word of God. Uh, people today are like, you have to be depressed in certain areas. You're, you, and they'll tell you. Now, now there, there may be a medical condition. There be, may be uh, things that are, are, are um, yes, wrong, but people say, you have no choice. There's no way for you. You're clinically depressed. You, you have a problem, and there's no hope for you. That's not according to the Bible. It doesn't matter what's there, we can overcome with the word. Amen. See, the, the other things are crippling. They're like, you have no hope. This is, what, this is your lot. Here, we'll get, again, not, listen to what I'm saying. You can't find the answer in a pill. I'm not saying there's a, not knocking. Medical science has done a lot for me. There are a lot of people that would be dead without certain things. But then there are things that actually are not helpful in the long term. And a pill in certain areas can just cripple you further. 
and the bounce back is going to be worse. And you're not dealing with the heart of the problem. And you go through that, and then you just get more hopeless. Because you tried this, and you tried this, and you tried this, and it's not working. But the Word of God will always work. It said He always leads us in triumph. That includes everything. And the Word of God will set us free when, when people don't know how to. We ought to know men are limited. I don't care how many letters they have behind their name, not knocking on education. We should get as much education as we believe we need to do what we're called to do. But we ought to know people don't know everything. I mean, they knew, they knew less 10 years ago than we know now. We're going to know, you know, if Jesus doesn't come back uh, by 10 years, we're going to know more as a society than we do now, right? But we still don't know everything. We ought to know right now we don't know everything because in a year we're going to know exponentially more. But God knows it all right now. Um, you know, you may not live long enough on the earth to get the medical answer to your problem, but God has it right now. In other words, there's people that died 100 years ago where they wouldn't die today because there's medical procedures that would save them. But there's also people that were healed 2,000 years ago when there wasn't any medical procedures and they had things that, that uh, com they were completely cured when Jesus walked the earth and the same thing now. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for a person to save you. We can look at what God can do. So he delivers us, and he will deliver us, and that's the attitude we have to have. But there are things that come against us, and there is a temptation then to look at those things. So I was going to say this earlier. I'll finish with the, the thought. We talked about the, you know, the medication and things. But if don't fool yourself. I don't care who, who it is. If you look at the wrong thing, you will become depressed. I'm going to say that again because you're just looking at me. If you look at the wrong thing over and over, the wrong perspective, you will be depressed. I don't care who you are. The answer is not to say, that's, well, I'm, that's just my lot, that's who I am. It's to start looking at the right thing and take your eyes off the wrong thing. We're not talking about denying. We're not talking about just pulling this guy. Well, you don't know my problem. The, the, the answer is to look at God and say, he is bigger than my problem. Amen. See, it's not denying the problem. It's saying God is bigger. And somebody said, well, you just don't know what I've been through. You don't know how powerful God is. Because there isn't any problem that a human can face that Jesus isn't already the answer to. And so we need to make a lot of him and little of our problem. We don't need to respect our problem. That's the problem. It's just, it's so big, you don't understand. No, we get to flip that and go, with God, it's nothing. It, with God, it's, you know, it's like you know, you're in a neighborhood growing up. And there's kids that are bigger, faster, or stronger. You know, the, you know the, the friends have some kid they know that's bigger. And, you know, if you mess with them, they got, then there's another kid that's bigger and stronger. It's like, the, you know, one kid looks big until the other dude pulls up. <laughs> well, you thought, you know, he's big compared to the small kids, but then somebody else rolls up. It's like, well, well this dude ain't so big. <laughs> See, that's what we have to do. You can't make, oh, you know, my problem, it's so big, it's so big. No, you need to look at it in light of God. If you look at it and say it's so big, in light of what you can do, that might be true. But when you look at God, who's infinitely big, and you look at your problem and say, okay, this is no problem. This is no problem. He, he's got it. He can do it. See, if you have that attitude, now that'll bright. See, if you really believe that, that'll change your, your perspective. That'll change your attitude. You can't, if you know that the answer, you're looking at the answer, and he can take anything, your countenance, your face has got to change. There's no way you can actually believe that God can take care of it and still be depressed. Think about it. If your answer, if you knew, like let's just, for example, let's say it was a financial problem and you needed $10,000 for a certain thing and you didn't have it. If, so, if, if there was somebody right next to you that said, here, $15,000 cash, or you knew that I was on the way, there's no way you're like, no, I just, I mean, it's, it's $10,000. I just don't know how I'm The answer is there. If you believed that, if somebody told you, hey, I got it, I'm bringing it over, if you believed it, you would be happy. You'd be like, I'm done, all right, right? And now, if you didn't believe it, you, would, you might still be depressed. Or if you just looked, oh, yeah, you're not listening to him. That seems stupid. That seems like 
get your head out of the sand, but that's what we're doing when we're looking at the problem and we're not looking at God. We're saying, no, I mean, I, I see you. I see, I see what you say in the word. I see, but, 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 but look at this. This is, this is a real problem. See, we're not looking at the right thing. Okay, so we are all tempted to do that. You're, you, got, you have something in front of you that's crushing. It, you know, we read what Paul's saying. There is going to be a temptation to look back at, at the, the issue and not look at God. Look at 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12. <clears throat> so there is going to be that temptation. So when you're tempted, <laughs> don't go, what? I, what? You know, don't be surprised. And then don't yield to it. Don't give in to it. Verse 12, 10, verse Corinthians 10, verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No tempt. Now, this in context talking about you can, you can be tempted in any area. Okay? Don't be tempted by sin. That's a lot of times people think when they see temptation, you know, we can list off things. They, they're tempted to do something bad, quote, unquote. You can be tempted in any area. You can be tempted to doubt God. You can be tempted to turn your back on God. You can be tempted to be depressed when you should be looking at him. Now, I'm not making light. We've all had challenges. I'm not making light of that. But what we do need, we do need to make light of our problem and say, no, God's bigger. Yeah, you're right. God's bigger. The more we go, no, you just don't know. We're holding on and looking at the wrong thing. And it doesn't matter how real it feels in front of us. If we do that, it's going to lead to defeat. That's just the truth. And if we get, you know... If we try to hold on to it and go, no, this is really big. Well, that's what Paul could have done. He's been like, man, we're, we're going to die and just stay there. No, I'm not going to be, I'm not cheered up this time. We're going to die. There's no way. No, he said God's going to deliver us. And so he did what he said. He's believing God. So this says, uh, verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. Everybody say common. common. What does common mean? It means it's all around you. It means it's not unique, right? You know one of the things that the, the devil, there is, there is one called Satan, the devil, that you know the thoughts that you can have that the enemy will bring to you is that there is nobody that is going through what you've gone through. Nobody. It's unique. And it's impossible. That's the connotation. If you can think you're the only one out of the billions of people that are walking the face of the earth and have walked the face of the earth, and your problem is unique, well, I mean, how can it be, how can it be uh, overcome? I mean, I'm the first person and only person that's dealt with it. Number one, it's a lie. There's some form that people are dealing with stuff very similar to what we have dealt and are dealing with, and he's saying... And again, it's talking about tempting to, to fail and stuff, but you could look at this. Temptation is universal. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. Put this, think about this in, in, in context or in, in uh, the context of what we're talking about. Temptation to quit. Temptation to look at the wrong thing. Temptation, because those are all, that's, we all think temptation to sin in some way. Well, doubting God is sin too. I mean, we're looking at the wrong thing. We're not, we're not doing what we should, right? So look at it as temptation to do anything but pressing on and doing what God told us to do. It said, no temptation has overtaken you except as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make the way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. Now we're going to read, uh, we'll read another version, but that doesn't mean that God is putting it on you to see how much you can take. And, oh, you know, people like, people will misquote this and say, God won't give me more than I can bear. That's not what it says. Let's read it again. He, God is not giving you more than to bear. It said he won't allow you to be tempted. It said, look at... Um, Halfway through 13, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. He won't allow you to be tempted. In other words, there's stuff that comes against us on earth, but it will never be, allow it will never be more than what we can overcome and what we can uh, 
overtake. In other words, well, let's read this part. It says, will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That means there's always a way through and over and out. Always. Always. There's never a time where there's not a way through. That means you could put it like this. If you know somebody gave this example who was a fighter growing up, you know, did fighter, and he, he liked to put it this way. If it's in the ring with you, you can beat it. If it's in front of you, you know you can win. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. Not that God's putting it there. It's just God said, no, you won't, it, I won't allow it. You won't, if, unless you can take it, it won't be in front of you. So we know if it's in front of us, we can take it out. We can win. Now, it doesn't always feel like that. <laughs> it may feel like, oh, I'm going to get my rear end kicked here. But no, we have to say, no, no. Jesus said he always leads me in triumph, and I'm going over. Let's re read it in the NLT. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful who will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. The other one says endure. I like that better. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure, so that you can go through. He'll show you the way. He'll always help you. Again, to what? To win. To get through, to get to the other side. So what do we have to do when we're tempted? When there's a push, what do we do with the temptation? We resist it and we say, no, 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 I'm not going down here. I'm going through. I'm winning. No, it may look like, you know, you got to be like Rocky. I mean, that's crazy. Rocky four. You know, the dude, dude's huge. Every Rocky, they're all the same. But anyway, but Rocky four, when you see how small he was against Dolph Lundgren, Von Drago, I mean, it, it, that's crazy. And he just won't go down. He's just like, no, I'm not going. He just get. I mean, you know, he never guards himself. It's just crazy. He just goes in like this, not like a boxer. Like, he's always like this, and he's just getting jacked. <laughs> he's going back. And, I'm going back. And, it's like, put your guard up, man. Guard. <laughs> Painful, but you know, he's just like, Dah. do it again. Dah. But he, but you know, he just keeps going. And finally, he knocks the dude out. Well, that's what it is. It might feel like you're going down. Like, no, no. No, I'm not. We're going up. It, it, it's like take your best shot. If you're in the ring with me, you, you're going down. And, it, you know, the thoughts will be like, oh, no, you're going down. I don't care what the Bible says. No, no, that's where we have to say, oh, no, I know what the Bible says. <laughs> and I know who's with me. And God is faithful. Amen. He knows how to get me through. He knows how to get me over. You know, let's read a couple of scriptures here just in the same vein. 2 Peter 2.9 says, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. He knows how to. You say, your brain goes, I have no clue what to do. You say that God knows how to deliver me. Right. Romans 14.4 says, Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he, God, will make him to stand. For God is able to make him stand. You can say, God is able to make me stand. God is able. God is able. God is able to make me stand. God is able to help me go forward. He's able to bring me over. Jude 24 says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless, to keep you from going down, to keep you from being taken out. He's able to keep me and to bring me through. Psalm 94, 17 says, Unless the Lord has been my, had been my help, my soul would have soon settled in silence. See, unless the Lord would have been my help. If I say my foot slips, in other words, God, I don't know. I don't know if I can go. For, I don't know if I'm going to make it. That's like what Paul was saying. Your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your, you, your comforts delight my soul. Your foot, you feel like your foot slipping. and you say, oh, no, Lord, you're bringing me over. You're bringing me through. You're helping me. No, I'm not. I feel tempted to look at the circumstance. I feel tempted to look at the trouble. I feel tempted. I feel like I'm being pushed, but you're my help 
And if you wouldn't have been my help in the past, I wouldn't have gone over. Lord, you're my help now. You're able to make me stand. I'm going to win. I am winning now. And whatever's here, it's got to go down. I'm not going to give in. And if I don't give in, then I will go over. Amen?